I'm super proud with how my latest shop automation project turned out. I took two of these $8 smart switches and I automated my dust collection system. Anytime I turn on my table saw, my dust collector turns on as well. But I've got a problem. I've got way more tools in this shop that create sawdust. I've got a bandsaw, I've got a belt sander, I've got a miter station, and I even have this CNC machine over here that creates so much sawdust. All of these tools need to be connected to that dust collector, and I'm gonna do it using this. Another one bites the dust? Yeah? No? I'll work on that. In the last video, I flashed some custom firmware on these off-the-shelf smart switches to get this automation to work. These switches can measure current, so when the tool turns on, it sends a signal to turn on the dust collector. So all I need to do is flash a smart switch for each of these tools behind me. That's the easy part. I've already solved that problem. The idea is to collect dust from three different places in my shop. The first being the table saw, the second being any tool that's being used here at this station, and then the third place is my CNC machine. Remember, that creates a lot of sawdust. But here's the problem that I want to try to solve. Anytime I have the dust collection system turned on, I don't want to waste suction where it's not needed. Without blast gates, the dust collector would be trying to suck up sawdust from all of these locations and it would be totally ineffective. It wouldn't be doing its job. So to solve that problem, I just need to use a blast gate like this. This is a manually operated blast gate and you can see that it opens and closes airflow. I need to put one of these around each of the zones that I want to control. If I were doing this manually, I would have to remember to go around and make sure that everything is closed and then only open the blast gate at the station I'm working at. My goal is to eliminate any need to think about that and just have it happen automatically. So I'm gonna put my own bite size spin on it and automate these because that is what I do. So step one is let's get some PVC pipe up and create my three sawdust stations. One of my stations is gonna be here at the table saw while the rest of the dust collection system will move along the wall. I have a little bit of a gap kind of below this lumber rack that is perfect for this dust collection pipe. It's kind of wasted space, so I think I'm gonna tuck it up underneath there. I probably am just gonna remove this existing flexible pipe. Oh man, it's like wrestling a python. Do you see these ridges on the flexible hose? Those actually reduce your suction power from your dust collector, so I'm gonna be using as much rigid pipe as possible. So first, I need to decide what kind of Y splitter I wanna use. I've got a couple of different options, and I think I'm gonna go with this kind. Why? because I like it. So here's what I'm thinking. I've got this three-way splitter here and I think I'm gonna put it up like this and the dust collector will kind of come in here on the left-hand side. The first port here will go to my table saw, which is behind me. And then this third port here will go down this long mouse run. I call it a mouse run because if I were a mouse in this workshop, that's where I'd be doing my exercise. These are the biggest zip ties I've ever seen in my life. Ride the pony. So it's gonna go in there something like that. I think I want uh, a dust collection port, a blast gate here in this area. So I'm just gonna measure that out real quick and cut it on my saw. This is gonna fling tiny particles of PVC all over the shop. But this is why I need a dust collection system. Can you believe that? I have to turn off that shop back manually like a Neanderthal. This pipe goes here. And leave that kind of sticking out a little bit. So I put this lumber rack up well before I knew I was gonna put dust collection down there. And had I just moved it up an inch and a half, we would have been fine. So I think it's probably worth me moving this up just so that I'm not fighting it the whole time. Bob, you gonna put the camera down and help me, all right? <laughs> Is that your, your head shaking? <laughs> I'm considering adding a little sweep suck up zone. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I have, oh, I have this piece here 
don't know if you can see that, but it basically goes on the ground and will attach into a dust collection system and it's a little spot for you to sweep into as it sucks up all the debris. That way I could sweep up the shop, turn on the dust collector and just sweep it right into there. It wouldn't be that much extra work to add that so I think I'm gonna just go ahead and do it. Okay, now. You probably noticed I'm taping together two 45 degree. It's because I didn't account for doing this one, so I didn't buy enough of the 90 degree joints. So next time I'm at the store, I'm just gonna pick up a few more 90 degrees and then I can swap this out, okay? All right, we've got all four of my stations now. We've got one for the table saw, one for the miter saw, and any other saws I have here at this station, one for the CNC, and then I've got the floor sweep, which I hadn't accounted for. I think to test this out, it'd be interesting to put a little sawdust in the floor sweep, but leave the other three ports open. I know this is really scientific. If I wanted to be like more precise, I would get an anemometer and measure the cubic feet per minute, the CFM, before and after this test, but I don't have one of those, so we're gonna do the uh, dustometer test here. All right, so let's turn this thing on. Okay. Yeah, I can feel with my hand, there's really not much suction going on. To mimic what the blast gates will be doing, I'm gonna use a small piece of plywood and cover up the other three ports. Now let's see if this works. Did you see how well that worked? I didn't even have to sweep the dust in. It started sucking it up from way out here. I could even hear it uh, making its way to the dust collector, which tells me that this idea is going to work. So all I need to do now is design and build the actual blast gates. This was just the easy part. Here's an example of a blast gate that I'm trying to recreate. Now this style is sort of a linear style. I have to pull it back and forth. Now if I'm gonna do that, I need to use either like a linear actuator or like a pneumatic cylinder like I've done in previous projects. But the problem with using a pneumatic cylinder is that I have to have an air supply running to each blast gate. After considering that for a while, I decided to go against that for a lot of different reasons. And instead, I'm gonna to try to design a rotational blast gate. So I've just finished laser cutting the first prototype of this rotational blast gate. And this is what it looks like. I've got a front and a back piece that look like this and a piece in the middle that's the actual gate that sandwiches between the two pieces. So ideally, this is how it's going to work. The servo can control the position of the gate. If I want the air to pass through, I need to rotate the servo into this position, which allows airflow to go through. Or I can close the servo, and that will shut the blast gate, forcing it to close off. This is gonna be so much easier to do using like a servo instead of having to use a rack and pinion gear or like a pneumatic actuator. The nice thing about this is that I don't really have to worry about it sealing very well because the suction of the dust collector is going to help this close up and remain airtight. So the next step is just to flesh this idea out. I'm gonna 3D print it instead of using the laser cutter and I need to figure out how I'm going to mount the servo as well as the control electronics. So let me go dive into that. Here's what I've come up with on my first iteration of 3D printing. I've got my front and back piece. You'll notice that now they have these extended pieces that will connect into the PVC pipe. And then I also have the blast gate itself. That's the piece that has the hole in it that will rotate back and forth. So I can start assembling this by placing these pieces together and then putting the blast gate in between like this. And then I need to attach the servo motor on here like this. The cool thing about this servo is that it actually accepts an M3 screw right inside the shaft, and I'm gonna use that to help align everything. So I've got an M3 screw here, then I need another machine screw here to connect the servo horn with our blast gate. So let me go grab one of those. I think that should be long enough. Okay, oh, I forgot. I also need to 3D print some spacers that will go in the other two corners. For now, I can just throw an M5 bolt in there to keep them together. So we've got the servo attached, but as I'm looking at this, we need a spot for the electronics. Um, my initial thought is maybe I could attach them to the servo on this side and everything would be all on one side. But the problem with that is that I'm a little bit concerned about electromagnetic interference because this is a Wi-Fi chip. I don't want the servo you know, turning on and off to interfere with those Wi-Fi signals. So separating those two pieces out is probably better. What I'm thinking about doing is using a similar extruded boss on this side and I can just design an enclosure that will mount to the same thing. The benefit of that is that it'll just be identical. Those two parts will be the same thing and I don't have to worry about 
printing different things. You know what, I actually just wrote a quick piece of code on the microcontroller to see if I can get the blast gate to open and close. So I'm gonna plug it in and see if it works. Ah, there it goes. That works so well. So I'm gonna keep working and refine this design just a little bit, and I need to add the electronics enclosure on the front. Here's what I came up with for the enclosure for the controller. I 3D printed a little case here that will uh, fit one of these little ESP8266 modules. In order to connect the servo to one of these control boards, I need to solder on a header first, and I also need to solder on some wires for the push button that will manually control the blast gate. Once I get all four of these control boards assembled, I'll put them on the blast gates. I'm installing these blast gates and there are a few things that I'm considering. The blast gate controlling the table saw was positioned on the floor, but I was worried about stepping on it and it breaking, so I ended up moving it up here closer to the outlet. The other thing I needed to do was to 3D print an adapter that goes from four inches down to two and a half, and that's because everything on this table will use a two and a half inch hose. So now I can program these blast gates. I went into Home Assistant and I created configurations for every single one of these devices. For example, when I use the miter saw, I don't want the dust collection turning on and off every time I click the button on the saw. That would get really annoying. So what I did was I added a one minute delay. So as I use the miter saw, the dust collector will stay on for an entire minute as long as nothing happens and then it will finally turn off. You'll notice that each of these blast gates have a button on the side. That's so that I can manually turn on and off the dust collector if I'm not using the saw. And that really comes into play on the last zone, which is the floor sweep. There's no tool controlling the dust collector, so I just need to turn on the button in order to turn on the dust collector. So here we go. I've got all of the zones set up, the blast gates are open, I finished programming the automation in Home Assistant, and now I'm ready to test this thing out. When I turn on the table saw, what I'm expecting to happen is the blast gate to open and the dust collector to turn on. So let's go, we're gonna give it a shot. So for the table saw, I programmed the blast gate to stay on for 10 seconds. So after about 10 seconds finishing the cut, it should turn off. And there it is. All right, that worked great. So that's one for one. Let's move on to the miter station. Let's see if this works. For the miter station, I want the dust collector to stay on for an entire minute after I've made the cut. So that way it doesn't turn on and off every time I make a little cut. So let's go ahead and test it out. Now we wait a minute for the dust collector to turn off. A minute might seem like a long time, but if you've ever used a miter station, sometimes you have to take measurements in between and you don't want that dust collector turning on and off while you're doing that. So I think a minute is a perfect amount of time. Two down, now we're on to number three. This is the CNC router. And unlike the miter saw, the CNC router I have turn off immediately after the tool turns off. That's so cool. Works perfectly. This is so exciting. Now I'm on to number four. This is the floor sweep. So there is no tool to turn this on and that's why I added a button to each one of these blast gates. The button manually opens and closes each blast gate which then turns on the dust collector. But let's see if this actually works. I'm gonna make it a little more interesting by dumping some sawdust here on the ground. And I'll push the button which turns on the blast gate and the dust collector. And now I can sweep this up. I'm gonna save so much time by having this in my shop. It's a game changer to have something like this in your shop. How many times have you gone to use a saw and been like, you know what, this is just gonna be a quick little cut, I'll make it, and then you're coughing for five minutes because you didn't bother to turn on the dust collector. Now everything happens automatically and I have the peace of mind knowing that I have this system in place. If you wanna build this for your shop, I'm gonna have everything available on my GitHub page so you can go and download the files and build this for yourself. If you're into home automation, you should check out this video where I helped my friend build a device that reminds him to feed his dog. With that, I'm ready to start working on my next project.